What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations. I'm the host of Epic Conversations and 20 award winner in the innovation category given out by the Canadian Ethic Media Association. And also, I am the host and co-producer of monthly live online conversations for fathers that are sponsored by Dad Central Canada's National Fatherhood Organization and Dove Men Care. And always, you are blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles and a solution for someone's problem. We have another new friend on the Dr. Vibe show tonight. Yes! Yes! Yeah, he is a prolific entertainer and a triple threat in the areas where I can't get out of my chair and dance because you wouldn't see my face and you don't want to see any acting and singing and has performed in various capacities since the age of 10. In April 2009 and June 2010, she was a dancer and co-choreographer in Excusia Media Group's inspirational play, Ultimate Sacrifice. Is that with Cheryl? Yes, Cheryl Nelson. Uh, yes. yes, okay. In 2018, <laughs> she co-hosted the Toronto International Nollywood Film Festival Award Show. And currently she stars as Wingy in the 2019 Marsha Brown Productions comedic stage play Deception. In 2020, she will be in the stage play in Perfect Love. Her comedic antics can be enjoyed on YouTube and Instagram under the tag at one Natalie Camille. Welcome for the first time and not the last time. And also one of the stars of the upcoming comedy show this Friday, May 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, the Laugh Along Comedy Weekend Show. And there are, well, I know earlier today there were a few free tickets left. Not sure if there are or not, but even if they're not, you can still purchase a donation ticket for any amount you choose. Because I have a feeling by the end of this conversation, the free one's going to be oh. gone. You're going to be done. <laughs> It's done. Good. I'm glad to hear that. You know, so it's free. If you didn't pick one up, it's not my fault. Welcome to Kinte Ferguson from the uh, LA area. And also welcome to Luke, great supporter from the Windsor area. And also Lady Day, one of the performers coming up this Friday. And Miss Natalie, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm doing fantabulous. Trying to be positive during this self isolation. How you handle the self isolation? Okay, next as, subject. Yeah, as good as a single woman can, I can say that. Oh boy, <laughs> this is already gonna be fun already. I did it. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, and if Lady Day, oh my goodness, I'm already getting, I'm already shaking my head this Sunday night because something tells me single women is gonna be part of the conversation. All okay, the ladies. We're going to talk. I'll just sing uh, All right. I'm, I'm going to escape and let's say, let's find out a little bit about young Natalie because if I go down that <laughs> hole, I ain't going to be able to dig myself up. So let me exit stage left. Share about some of the young Natalie with our audience. Young Natalie? Yes. Mm. You're still young. Well, see, and that's another thing. I don't like talk age <laughs> with women. So uh, that's it. You mean my my childhood, my bringing up? Yes, I like that childhood. Thank you for oh. escaping me. I appreciate you. Love you. Yes, yes. The 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 politically correct way of yes question. <laughs> um. Well, I was born in Toronto, and okay. six months after I was born, my mom moved to Kitchener. Oh. And so Kitchener, Ontario. I know so random, eh? Oh wow. <laughs> random. Mm. Yeah, moved to Kitchener, lived there for eight years. Um, it was different. It was fun. It was impressionable. I lived closer to, I don't know if you know, Highway 8, Fairview Mall. Like I, I, I know that area because my, my brother and his family live in Woodstock. Okay. So okay. I know I know that. I, 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 and they move out there when it was country. In no country no more. Right. It's built <laughs> up that side there. You know, when, when there was no lights on 401. And yes. I'm driving like this, yes. the 401, you know, trying to see because it's so dark. Yes. Yeah. And Them sometimes they... when I was driving at night, I got a little wary when police would. No, that's another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Maybe I should be asking you questions. Ooh. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm clean, man. <laughs> but no, I'm good. I'm good. 
I'm good. I don't know what poles are. You know, only pole <laughs> vault, not poles. All right. <laughs> you know, confession is good for the soul. That's what my mom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> good for the soul. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Can I move over on the pew? I come sit beside you in the pew. <laughs> oh God! But yeah, I lived in Kitchener until I was eight, and um, that time my mom's a single mom, three okay. girls. Um, and at times I was, you know, my grandmother helped, my aunt helped, um, to raise us. Um, but my mom did everything by herself, mother, father, everything. And, um, um, eight years old, we moved to Mississauga and I lived in Mississauga until 2018 from 84 till 2018 and love Mississauga. Now I'm in love the West coast. Yeah. Love the West. So for pe West so people who are people are watching or listening who are outside of Toronto, we're t well, Kitchener is about what was it hour hour and a half drive from Toronto? Yeah, hour. Really? Hour. Yeah. yeah, and then Mississauga's the western part of the Greater Toronto area. So just giving some some geography for the yes. to the foreigners, yeah. right? Mississauga's like just outside, and we live like border Mississauga Toronto. Okay. You know? Um. And that was, and then we moved out towards Oakville, so that was more towards Bush back over. Yeah, so it's like further away from Toronto. It's still in Mississauga. Um, and growing up, I grew up in a Christian home, always going to church, always serving in ministry. Um, and you know, I always knew that I wanted to do entertainment. I wanted to dance. I wanted to sing. And you know, growing up, I watched everybody watch Michael Jackson. Right. And um, that was my music teacher online or watching him. I learned certain things, you know, VCR tape. We recorded, yes. my sisters would record the videos and we would slow it down and say, what move did he do there? How did he do it? So Michael Jackson, Paula Abdul, Janet Jackson, those are the three. I watched, I watched. Did, so here's a question for you. Did you ever see them on the Arsenio Hall show? I saw Arsenio, Paula Abdul, yes. Yes, because Paul, uh, there was long time back in those days, everyone thought Paul Abdul and Arsenio Hall had something going on because they every did. time, I don't know if they did know, but every yeah. time she came, every time she came on the show, he was a mess. He was just like frothing at the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Agree. Yes. She was a looker. I mean, she was pretty girl, cute and everything. straight up. No? Straight, straight up. up. Don't tell me. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, da, 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 C N uh, okay, uh, bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Dude, oh my God, the dance moves in that. Oh, I killed it, cold, cold-hearted snake. I killed it, like oh my God, cold-hearted. Wow. It. Trust me, Janet Jackson, Rhythm Nation, Michael Jackson, every song. I mean, <laughs> like it was just yeah. I but my mom and I watched the show Fame. My mom. Christian West Indian mother. My mom's like, you can't watch that. You know, see the ungodly show. You know, see, you can't watch that. Look at that. Them vulgar, them half naked. This. And I'm like, oh my God, mommy. So I had to sneak and watch these shows. You know? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So growing up, I knew that was my passion, but yeah. I didn't know how to bring that to my mom. You know, and us growing up in West Indian homes, even like back then, you know, even. Black people on a whole, your parents want better for you. So if you tell them that you want to be a singer, you want to be a dancer, you want to be an actor, they're like, you're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> you must say, lick your head upon something, you know? So mom's like, no, you're doing computers. There's money. Yep. Computers. You're doing, you know, office work, those kind of things. So I'm like, so I ended up going to school for marketing. And then after that, I went and worked for the bank for a long time wow and but it never left me in church i was leading dance dance teams i was acting i was singing i was doing everything my passion you know still and then even i was venturing out um and then it got to a point in 2015 older now that um i was like you know what i'm tired of this i can't do this anymore and it the, the it started to catch up with me that i was like right i'm not happy I need to fulfill this passion of mine to do this like more on a full-time level. You know, I don't yep. want to put no more focus in the bank. So right. 
Yep. I made the move in 2018 to start going into the entertainment industry. Um, you know, doing background work, getting my feet wet. I did a couple of commercials. And then 2019 comes and somebody says, hey, Natalie, can you do um, stand-up comedy for what I, I looked at them like they're crazy. I'm like, stand-up comedy? And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I think you can do this. We have like a um, fundraiser. We need entertainment. And I said, okay, all right, I'll do it. Because by that time I realized, you know what, Natalie, just do it. You have one life to live. Don't walk in fear, you know? You're going to regret not doing it. You waited this long to not do things, you know, like just, just do it. So I said, okay, if I flop, I flop, I'm just going to go up there and just really relax. And it went well. And then at the same, just before that, actually, just before, like hours before that, somebody texted me and said, oh, Natalie, I have a show in July, like two months from that day. It was in that, that other show was May. And this right. was, they they texted me and they're like, Natalie, I have, a, I have a, a show in July. Can you do stand up comedy? And I'm like, um, I'll get back to you. I want to see something because I want to see how it was going to go that day with that show before I say yes to the second one. And it obviously, went well. yeah. And then I messaged her and I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And both shows went well. So I haven't hid from it. Um, there were other shows I was supposed to do last year, but, um, time wasn't on my hand. I had other things going on and I wasn't able to do it. So I said, okay, I'm going to embrace this. Mm -hmm. This. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me ask a few things. I want to retro back a little bit. Yeah. What are your memories of living in Kitchener? Um, fun times. Like I don't think living in Kitchener was any different from living anywhere else. I had, I was still a child in, in Miss, when I moved to Mississauga and yep. still playing outside. Um, you know, you know what? There's one memory that I have and I, I don't know. I don't know why, but it, it's not a positive one. <laughs> so I, I um, and it was my first encounter ever and you'll hear. So I go outside to play and um, I was living in townhouses at the time. And, um, the townhouses, the, the area that I was walking in, the townhouses were back to back. Their backyards were facing each other, but it was like an open kind of field that you could walk through. So I was walking through and this girl, this white girl, rode her bike towards me. And then she called me and I was oh. like, yeah, that was the first time. I was maybe six or seven wow. at the time. And I was like, huh? So, and then she, she kind of like pushed me or something like that. Can't remember, something physical. And I went home and I was like, oh my God, kind of kept it to myself. The second time, I don't know if it was the next day, but it happened again. So mm. I told my mom, I was like, oh, went home and said, mommy, this girl, she hit me, blah, blah, blah. My mom said, typical West Indian, if somebody lick you, lick them back. Mm. So I'm like, that's all I needed, that green light. Right. So this day now, I go walking now, confidence. And this, the same girl riding her bike over and then she called me you know, come to fight me. I took my fist and I gave her one punch in her face. Wow. Trust me. Never mess with me again. <laughs> never mess with I me I wonder again. why. I, 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 I have my new security guard. I know. <laughs> you boxer. Yeah, yeah. And that was in Kitchener, you know. Um, and I look back and I'm like, that was my first, I think my first and my last encounter with that. Wow. You know, being called that. Um. And I was so young and I knew that it was not right. I already knew. And I don't know at what point I knew that what that word meant, you know, and, um, and, but I was a smart child. That's right. one thing that I know I was aware of things, you know, even looking back and telling my mom, talking to my mom about certain things. I'm like, why? I was aware of where I lived and, you know, all those things, you know, yeah. it was, it was good times. It was good times though. Excellent. Excellent. So, so let me ask, uh, I know your mother's been a major influence in your life. First of all, is she still alive? She is. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So here's some questions. First of all, yes. what, what have you gleaned from your mother? What have you learned and have applied to your everyday life that your mother has shown you 
um, in her everyday living? What things have you taken and applied to your daily walk? Well, one thing I know I naturally got from her is dedication and commitment. Right. My mom was a nurse for many years. Same and here. Had, yeah. And you had, actually, do you know this is Nurses Week? Is it? Yes, it oh, is. I have to tell her that. She doesn't know. I know she don't know that. <laughs> I have to tell her that. Yeah, she's a retired nurse now. And um, yeah, she worked as a nurse for many years. Even when she had me, she was going to school for nursing. And um, her dedication and her commitment to helping people, like just watching her do that, um, her passion for it, you know, I, I got that from her, you know, just um, seeing people where they're at and helping them. Um, the other thing is just her way of thinking about us, um, a, 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 a sowing and reaping type of thing. I remember one story where she came home and she said she got in an accident. And somebody had hit her. But when she looked at the car, it was only like a little scratch. It wasn't anything. But, you know, some people will milk other people for money, right? So the person was like, oh, I'll pay, I'll pay. And she was like, no, it's okay. It's it's nothing. It's Don't worry about it. And I said, mommy, why didn't you take the money? The man ready to give you money. Why didn't you take it? She goes, no, because I don't want, if you guys are on the road, that something like that happens to you and somebody demands money from your hand. Wow. That somebody else will give you the same grace I gave wow. that person. And that blew me away. That blew me away. I never forgot that. That's never. That's an amazing story. That is an amazing she story. Is. She so always thinks What was her reaction when you made the decision to go full time into the entertainment world? <laughs> you know what that, that that look was priceless you if you're watching what? live or watching on the replay you got it but if you're only listening to this i can't even describe it you have to watch it <laughs> you know what i was i was hesitant to tell her anything because really um i was in the church always singing christian music gospel music and all this stuff and it got to a point in 2015 where I was making a transition to just sing life songs, songs about life. Yeah. And <clears throat> I was going through a program that um, trains you and it was in the States. So 2015, I'm telling my mom I'm going through this program and I'm sh tell, sh sharing with her the songs I'm going to sing. And I'm like, oh, God, watch your no, She's <laughs> going to have something to say. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. And mom's like, oh, OK, OK. So so what else are you doing? And I was like. Is this my mom? Like, what? <laughs> I was blown away. And then she even came with me to New Jersey for the training weekend. Wow. And I, what? So I just knew, okay, now's the time, you know? Um, even though it's later in life, I yep. said, you know what? My mom's at peace with it, I guess. I guess because she saw over the years how I never left dance. I never left singing. I never left acting. So she just knew, you know what? This girl now leave this in me, so I might as well just you know, <laughs> support it. Well, this you know her. what? You got something going on because right now live, there are people watching on Get Vocal. We have, but she is funny is watching. We've got Luke is watching. We've got Lady Day watching. We have people watching on Periscope. We have ah, one of, uh, like Serena Wills is watching on Periscope. And we also Serena people, Williams? At, what? Serena Williams? No, no, Serena Wills, not Williams. Come on now. Come on now. I know you just want to take over. And we also have people watching on, on YouTube. So all the live stream platforms that I broadcast on when I'm doing this live, people are watching on all of them right now. Awesome. So that doesn't happen often. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. Yes. Hope yes. Entertaining. So and 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 a big hello to Divine Rights and Serena Wills. Hope you and your son are doing outstanding. Wow. Let me get your memories of your first comedy performance. So that was last year in May, and that was for a fundraiser for a um, college, Cornwall College. Oh, you know what? You and I know each other. I was. At, Did you hold this? I know. I was at the event. My <laughs> father. Yeah. is one of the founding members of the Cornwall College Old Boys Association. Are you serious? 
serious? Yes, he is one of the founding members of the Cornwall College. So I'm going, I'm looking, going, all right, I know this lady from sorry. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. What? Small world. Also, yeah, I'm telling you, my mom said he's small but he big. That's what my mom always says. He's small but he big. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, my, were, were you nervous? You know what? You know, before the show, I told you I was anxious. Yes. So this, I used to run track when I was younger, and I was never nervous. I was just anxious to just do what, it. What's the you difference? Know? It's just like you just have this drive. Like you just want to get in it. You know, you don't want to wait. The waiting is like, oh, my God. I just want to get in it and start, you know doing what I do. So it's like the waiting. I hate anticipation. I hate, I hate that waiting period. I hate it. Right. I hate the feeling I get. But um, yeah, I was, I was like that. And then I said to myself, I, I think it was, there was slight nerves because it was my first time. Right. I knew what I want to say, what I want to do. I knew delivery and whatever. But then I said, you know what, just treat it like you're on Instagram. And you're talking to people on Instagram. Treat it like YouTube. Just do that. And I said, okay, I'm just going to do that. And that's what I did. And I was surprised by how comfortable I was on that stage. Okay. I was very surprised. I shot myself. <laughs> like, I got off and I was like, dang. Impressive. Okay. So, so <laughs> how did things get better first time to the second time? Because you mentioned earlier on in the conversation that someone had approached you even before you had done your first set that they wanted yeah. you how how did how did how did you feel or how did you feel after that first time and then how did you change or how was the second time different than the first time hmm. okay so i felt um confident i said you know what maybe this is something i could do but what i was struggling with was i didn't see myself as a comedian oh. i still kind of with it, I see myself as a storyteller okay. and I tell funny stories, you know, but I never thought of that as a comedian, being a comedian. So I'm like, I'm not a comedian. I'm not a comedian. And um, so doing the second show, it was a sm on smaller scale, um, but it was still, you know, comedy I had to present. And I was, I was still the same anxious, little bit of nervous. Sure. Um, approached it the same way but this time I did a little bit of interaction with the audience so I tried something different you know I I, I just said okay if it happens it happens you know I didn't want to plan it and then I just say no no you're not gonna do it so I just said if it happens it happens but I opened myself up to do a little bit of interaction um so that was that was the difference between the two sure yeah sure yeah you didn't see when did you see or start seeing yourself as a comedian or, ha, or, or have you That's fully or have you fully <laughs> another thing is oh maybe let me put it this way have you fully embraced it yet i think today i did <laughs> to be honest with you today i think today i did yeah i think today i did because um i looked at the flyer again for laugh along for friday's show and I'm like, Natalie, you know what? Just just embrace it. Just 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 take it in. You know, just take it in. Because I started to reflect. You know what? This pandemic time, yeah. I'm telling you, causing me to reflect on a lot of things. Good. You know? And um I I I have a YouTube channel on my Instagram that I have different skits that I do, sketch comedy and all that by myself. And um and I I reflected over the years on people telling me, oh Natalie, you're funny, your facial expressions, you're this, you're that, and I'm like, maybe I am funny, <laughs> you know? I'm like maybe maybe I am, maybe I have some jokes. So I said, you know what? Let me just embrace this thing, and just call it what it is, what everybody else is saying. Nice, nice. I just want to catch up on some comments. Sorry, for <laughs> people have been making some comments, so my apologies. Yeah. So we got catching up here. <laughs> Luke is saying this uh, COVID nineteen is like it's like a like it's it's like a vacation that everyone's on. That Lady Day is saying, Doctor Vibe, ask the men them why beautiful women like Natalie not have no man. Ask again, oh. ask again. Oh. Okay, ask the question. Thank you, Lady Day. Thank you. Ask 
Christmas. Oh, and she she also <laughs> says, "Love Sister Din." <laughs> Oh, yes, my character. Oh, okay. okay. We got it. Okay, hold on. We're going to get into that. Now, hold on a second now, because we all know about that. But also want to say hello to people watching on YouTube. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please ask. We, we have the lady. She's on fire right now, as you can tell. Uh, Toya C is going LOL on the uh, Facebook. Uh -huh. yeah. On the <laughs> Facebook. Part. Okay. Sister Din. Yes, sir. Oh, and Talia also <laughs> says Natalie is beautiful inside and out. Oh, thank you, Toya. All right, Sister Din. Yes, sir. Okay, talk to me. You want Sister Din to talk to you or you want Natalie to talk to you, sir? Hmm? I see you, Dr. Vibe. What kind of doctor you is? <laughs> what kind of doctor? Hmm? Medical. I wanted to know the back. I didn't want it full force. <laughs> we wanted what the background assistant did. But go ahead, give it, give it. No, no, no. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the background <laughs> oh, did. Gosh. So, Sister Din <laughs> is a grandmother. Okay. And uh, she's based off of actually my grandmother. Okay. And my mom. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My my grandmother's name was Denata. Oh. And some people did call it Sister, Sister Din. Din. Mama. Yeah, different names. Um, and yeah, it happened. It ironically, the, the, the character was created, um, May, what is the day that Megan and Harry got married? <laughs> Whatever day that was, that was the day she was created because I got on, I just, I watched it. I had an inspiration. And I got one of my church hat them. Oh my goodness. On the church hat. Oh my and goodness. The, the phrase that I kept yelling out in my Instagram video was black is back in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> I was like, Black is back in Buckingham Palace. Praise the Lord. Oh my Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Back. Black is back in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> yes. And Sister Din was born. <laughs> wow. wow. <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> so I do the costume everything and, and just do different skits or I have her just come on and encourage people. Like it's it's different stuff that she, she does sporadically. Lady, Lady <laughs> Day saying hallelujah. Yay. Glory. <laughs> I, I don't know, like, between <laughs> I've had Lady Day on, I've had Danny on. Danny was mostly very serious, but she did. And I don't know if I'm at this rate, I don't know if I'm going to make it to Friday. So give it to me easy, girl. <laughs> Come on now. Like, I want to make it to co host on Friday, by the way. But oh, so since your second performance, have you done other performances since then? No, okay. not at all. Interesting. Not at all. So, okay, so you've had a one a very successful, in my opinion, journey doing dramatic stuff and hosting MC stuff. What do you what do you find easier, doing the comedy or doing the other appearances, performances that you've done in your career? I find comedy the least easiest. Why? <laughs> Because it's new. I think that's why. Because it's new. Okay. And because I compare myself. I'm a person that compares herself to, um, oh gosh, like Martin Lawrence. Yeah. You know, Wanda Sykes, all these bigger people. You know, I'm like, I'm not like that. You know, I'm not, I'm not like that. Yeah. So, you know, Trevor Noah, you know all them something? Yeah. But they just seem so witty and so quick with it. And I'm like, I'm not, I don't think I'm quick with it like that, you know? So um, I'm like, okay, I don't think this is going to be so easy, but I'm not going to shy away from it. I'm at that place in my life where I'm not, I'm not shying away from it. So a few other comments, uh, and I forgot, I have also, I'm also broadcasting this live online throughout the world via audio. And we have uh, a gentleman who I haven't heard from in a long time, Rough Writing, is listening to this conversation live via audio. So right now you're on five different platforms. Wow. Right? Wow. What? Five. Which ones? So video-wise, you're on this one, Get Vocal. 
There's YouTube, yeah. Facebook Live, and you and uh, Periscope. Okay. So people are watching on all of those, and then someone is listening live through a audio streamer that I have called Mixer. So wow. he, someone just listening, they're not watching. So you're on, you're five for wow. five. Wow, nice, nice. Well, welcome right everybody. Now. Welcome to the chat. I, Yes, and but she is funny saying, "Don't kill this poor man with laughs." Someone cares about me. I love it. <laughs> I'll try not. Uh, also, comment here on uh, Serena Will says, "Sounds like the elders in Brooklyn out there at the West Indian Parade." LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Serena, right on it. Divine, right? You on point. So, so, ha so your mother has seen you perform live. Doing what? Comedy? <laughs> Doing what? No. I now what do I you what do you think she would say? What do you think she would say? Especially with si Sister <laughs> Din. Oh, I'd love. Oh, I I would pay to see her reaction you know to Sister no, Din. No, I showed her videos of Sister Din because I I show her like my Instagram, my YouTube videos, so she knows about Sister yes. Din. And I said, mommy, that's you. I still call my mom, mommy. I still call my mom, mommy. Yeah. Um, so I said, mommy, that's you and grandma. But that's more you. <laughs> and what is she? What, what was her reaction the first time she, she saw it? it? Like this. And then she just. <laughs> 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 and then, and then after a while, she. she laughed the suck teeth, old school suck oh, teeth, yeah. not young. Not picnic suck teeth, old school suck teeth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and cut eye, the cut eye. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I, I, I want to get serious for a moment. Why do you come like this comparison thing? Like you, you're comparing yourself to other people. Has that always been a part of you, or did it just arise in regards to doing comedy? No, it's always been like that. Um, and I'll tell you, my first love, I think, is dance. Um, and I, I think that was the first thing I picked up because I remember when I was six watching Michael Jackson on Motown 25 and he did the moonwalk yes, for the first time. The moonwalk. And I was in awe of that. I remember it like it was yesterday and it's so much decades ago. And I'm like, yes. I'm like Oh, I want to. I want to do that. I just knew I'd say I wanted to do that. I wanted to dance like that. So I always paid attention. And I didn't know Jackson Five before that. That was my first introduction okay. to Michael Jackson. And right. from that, I was watching. And growing up, I, as I said, I did. Um, I led different um, dance groups, but I never felt that I that I was good enough to do it professionally or anything wow. like that. I, my mom, single mother, we didn't have money, grew up like, whoo, rough. And okay. my mom wasn't into the dancing stuff. She wasn't into all of that. And I would love to take classes. That's why I say Michael, Paula, Janet were like my dance teachers. And, right. um, but I grew up wanting to do that, but I felt like I wasn't good enough. And it wasn't until like years later, I'm talking like in my late twenties, that I was like, yeah. man, I'm looking at people that I used to teach. I used to teach them and seeing what they're doing wow. now. And they're doing right. on certain levels, TV shows, all this stuff. And I'm like, I know their weaknesses. This could have been me, you know, but I was consistently comparing myself like, because, and I never felt I was good enough. And that's why I was comparing myself. That's why I thought I wasn't good enough because I was looking at this picture and thinking this is how it's supposed right. to look, you know? So that was something wow. I was always there. Well, if there's anything I want you to remember me sharing with you during our conversation is this short thing. You're good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Just accept that you're good enough, right? Your mom didn't invest and still has, still is investing you into a young, wonderful daughter that she didn't think was good enough. Mm -hmm. So she's good enough and she wants you to be good enough. So just own it and wear it. Thank you. I received that. I received it. Thank you. Uh, but she is funny saying a lot. I think every Caribbean child goes 
goes with these jokes. We used to act out Mrs. Chin at our church, testifying <laughs> too long every Sunday. <laughs> everybody had one of those. <laughs> everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I'm telling you, and I, I, I believe that you have a fan in Divine Right, a.k.a. Serena yes, Will. She's yes. going, yes, I remember Motown 25. And now she'll, and so I'm going to tell Ray, Divine Right, if you need me to send you the link for the comedy show on Friday, uh, DM me or put the message here in Periscope, and I'll DM you via Twitter the link because the free tickets, they may already be gone, but you can still get tickets and provide a donation. But anyone who's like showing love that like divine, right? I hope you can get a free ticket. Mm -hmm. So message me and I'll send you the link. Getting back to, she also has a question, Natalie, who's your favorite comedian and who do you look up to? My favorite comedian? Um, oh my gosh. Um, well, I haven't heard him do stand up in a while, but he makes me laugh all the time. Martin Lawrence. Um, okay. He makes me laugh all the time, like crazy. Um, what 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 about his style that you like? Um, he's he's goofy and his faces, you know, <laughs> his his just he's he's not afraid to be goofy and he fluctuates his voice and he. Um, his facial expressions, all of that. It's a mixture of all of that. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah, that's what I love. Okay. Definitely also, too, you, I know you know, I know that because you're a performer, that performing is a science. Do you, are you understanding that also comedy is a science, is an art? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, because it's performance. It's still performance still. So there's an element of how to approach things. There's an element of timing. Um, it's it's the same with acting, like theater, um, especially when you're doing um, comedy, any, you know, uh, comedic theater, there's timing, yep. you know, you have to be on time with, you know, the beat of the joke and all of that. So there's that, there's the voice, you know, a certain tone you want to keep at or if it's your mm -hmm. stick to be a, a certain maybe flat tone whatever you know um yeah there's there's different things and it's up to you as a com comedian to find where you fit and i'm still finding where i fit right <laughs> right yeah so before you started comedy and we touched about this a little bit earlier on but i want to get a little bit more into it you had more i say more serious roles or you were dancing, how did, or did those previous performances help you in your launching and your journey of your, in your comedy career? Um, you know what? I have no idea <laughs> when I think about it. Wow. Think, yeah, that's honest. No, that's honest. You know what? I think it's, you know what? I'll tell you this and I'll, I'll just kind of really keep it short. In 2010, I went through, I was engaged in 2009 and um, 2010, no, 2010, I was engaged. 2011, the engagement was off and I was devastated. It, Sorry to hear. Yeah, thank you. And um, it was a rough time. <laughs> and it brought me into a place where, you know, I was dependent on God to see me through it. And I remember praying things that, and, and this is this kind of deep. I remember praying things that um, um, he, was, he was bringing me on this journey of opening doors to different people. I was just opening doors, meeting things, learning things and all this stuff. And I was like, what is all of this? And I, I don't know if it was a distraction to get me off of the hurt and the pain I was going through. But what right. happened was I ended up starting to pray um, about, getting the things that my forefathers missed out on whatever blessing was for them and they never tapped into i want it whatever things they never did my mom missed out on i want it my father missed out on never met my father before but i'm his oh blood my. right yeah that's a story yep. in itself so um that um i i prayed and i began to see some i began to see something just come out of me i started doing certain different arts, different stuff. And 
um, the passion for the going getting into the entertainment world started to come and and burn inside of me so much I couldn't ignore it like I was like oh my gosh I think I'm gonna die if I don't do this and uh... um and I remember it's because I prayed I believe it was because I prayed that I wanted whatever was for me I called it my inheritance from a blessing of talents of whatever they were fearful that they didn't tap into I wanted it you know so I'm not surprised by this that by you know these doors opening you know and and not surprised by I don't know how where it came from because that's just what the journey I've been on for the last 10 years it's just mm. different <laughs> it is <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure that you at times go how what did I do to be here yeah yeah how did I get here <laughs> Yeah. Nice. This upcoming event mm -hmm. on Friday, obviously, it's your first online comedy event. Oh, yes. <laughs> How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm feeling good. It's going to be different because it's an online thing that normally you'd be on the stage for. But we're going to see. It's going to kick back. Have my drink and just cool out the crap. <laughs> I keep up some jokes. That's it, man. How did you feel when you were approached to be part of this great event? Uh, hesitant. <laughs> Again? Yeah, I was hesitant. That's what I'm telling you. The comedy, it's slowly. But I said, okay, you're not going to say no. The only way you're going to say no is if you have something else to do. That's the only way. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do well, it. Don't worry. I'll do it. You're, you're gonna be with family, so yeah. I, 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 I'm speaking. That's gonna be a great, great event with with you and for you. Yeah. Where do you get Where do you get your material for your performances from? Um. Life, life experiences. Um, my mom, a family, my just growing up. Um, things that I see that don't make no sense. You know, I watched the interview with um, Danny Redwine. Redwine. Yesterday, and she was talking about people watching. I was like, yo, this girl understands me. <laughs> I'm telling you, okay? I can sit down and just people watch. Let me tell you something. You go downtown Toronto, harbor front, and just sit there like prime time summer pure things to watch trust me mm. pure things to watch and make fun of <laughs> it's absolutely and, and it seems that danny's con right the conversation with danny is resonating with a lot of people oh yeah i identified with a lot of things she talked about yeah that's that's fantastic I, i'm i was humbled to be in that space at that time having danny share with us and and many many others what how is the current quote call this Paradigm. I can't even know this time. We're all inside. How is that affecting you? Is there, are you being more creative, less creative during this time? You know, in the beginning, I I, I had a mini panic like attack because <laughs> it was in March, and when all this was happening, it's like the first time something like this is happening. I live in Toronto by myself. I've always lived with family, and so right. in Toronto by myself like for two years now I'm it's not like a comfort to be here so I was like oh my god what am I gonna do so I called my mom I was like eh, I don't know how am I gonna handle this uh, uh. so she's like, <laughs> like don't worry you're all right God is with you God is with you and you know how mothers are and praying for me yeah. I'm like okay okay so in the beginning I was like oh my god oh my god and then afterwards I said you know what when CERB came, the Canadian Emergency Fund, when Trudeau said, yo, we're giving you money, I said, give it to me. I was saying, oh. <laughs> I said, come, come, come. Come, give me my account. Let me pick up the phone and call CERB. I said, CERB, give me money now. I want it, I want it, and I'm in yard. <laughs> Did everybody understand that? <laughs> oh. oh, boy. So, 
Oh my goodness, you're hilarious. I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, on the just want to shout out a yeah. uh, great, great friend of the Doctor Vibe Show on Periscope, Aisha K. Staggers. Well, Aisha, along with Jill Jones and Gina Figueroa, they come on the Doctor Vibe Show once every week. Uh, three wonderful ladies out of America, and they give their they drop knowledge bombs about what's going on in the U.S. So it's great. <laughs> It's great to see Aisha uh, on the platform. I, I had to do that or I would have dropped off this chair. because I was <laughs> so, You needed a break, eh? <laughs> so I needed, I needed an out. So Aisha, yeah. your time was fabulous. Absolutely yeah. fabulous. But, uh, af but after that, like I said, you know what, Natalie? Focus on your, your videos. Focus on, you know, building your YouTube platform because I'm really focused on building my YouTube platform and I'm getting videos out there because I did, I have gotten gigs through Instagram posting stuff. So, you know, Congratulations. I really want to, you know, get more stuff out there and get recognized. So, and I enjoy it. I enjoy doing the comedy videos, all that stuff. Nice. Yeah. G give, give our audience one or two. Oh, but she is funny is saying I am, and she puts in capital letters, hollering with laughs. Re C C R R C E R B. <laughs> she she's hollering about that. That that was vintage. That was. Vintage. <laughs> and by the way, uh, our uh, people who are outside of Canada, if you don't know what that is, that's our our government relief that they're giving out to people. It's the money, which is interesting because in <clears throat> in Canada. Our, the government is giving people up to two thousand dollars a month for about four or five for about four or five months, I believe. In the United States, you get a one-time twelve hundred dollar payment. Go figure. One time. <laughs> wow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Right. So, but uh, let's get back to this conversation. So. Give me one or two special moments during your entertainment career. They can be comedy or non-comedy. One, one of those, one or two moments where you said after, yes. Okay. Um, oh, I hope I don't cry. <laughs> it's all right if you do. Um, so I used to have a dance um, team called Ricard. And um, it was a Christian dance team. And we danced like, oh, gosh, we danced so many different places um, and so, so many different platforms, not just in church. And um, I decided 2007, I was going to do a show, a dance show. And my heart was just for people to dance freely, you know, in worship. And I pulled from different ministries, different churches and said, come, let's get together. Let's do a dance show. And I had a vision opening act and then, um, you know, the, everybody doing dances. And I had like breakers, break dancers. I had every tap. I had every type of genre of dance in that show. And I wanted the audience to also dance, right? So anyways, now the ending of it was going to be my dance team doing this. Um, um, it was a piece that of what I thought heaven could be like, you know? So oh, we were dancing wow. to, we were dancing to um, Israel Houghton's um, Alpha and Omega. I know and, the track. Yes. And beautiful song. It was hot at that time. So the song started playing and my two girls, two ladies on the, on the stage, they were signing. So I had them do sign language. We were all dressed in white. So there's going to be um, other dancers that were coming down the aisle with crowns and they were going to come to the stage. Then we we're going to break. They were going to come to the stage. We we're going to break out and dance. But what right. happened was at the beginning, when the girls started doing the sign, you were alpha and omega. All of a sudden, the, the CD starts to skip. So it starts to skip. And I'm like, what's happening? The CD never skipped before. So it's skipping, skipping. And then the, the guy, the sound guy played it back. It skipped yep. again. He played it back. I was like, what's happening? And then it got as far as like maybe, I don't know, two, maybe not even two minutes in and it yep. skipped and it wouldn't play. And my, a friend of mine, um, who's a praise and worship leader, he just started singing the song. By that time, people had already started to get into like, I guess a worshipful mode because of this, the song was hot. He started singing the song. He oh, started wow. singing it. 
everybody starts singing it. There was 200 people there in the audience. He starts singing it. And my team, I just said, keep going. I don't know. Let's just keep going. So my team just kept going with the flow. And I just went on stage and I just continued to dance like music was playing, but the audience was singing. And it was just a, a time of like, what is this? It was just a phenomenal thing. The CD jumped in right at the part where we were at in the dance. I don't know how it did that. It just jumped in in the middle of the, in the, middle of the song. And then um, at the end of it, I remember a coworker of mine was there at the show supporting me and she, had, she was in tears. And she didn't go to church or anything like that. She was in tears and gave me flowers. She goes, Natalie, don't worry about the CD. That was supposed to happen. And then somebody else said, you know, that, that was God. That was God. You know, and I was like, that, it gave me goosebumps. Because I wanted people to have an experience. I wanted people, and it was just like, whoa. And I know there may be people that don't believe in God or anything like that. You know, but that was my experience. That was what I it was a powerful moment that I can't even explain. And it was four years later, somebody saw me somewhere and they said, um, hold on, you lead the dance team, that dance team? I said, yeah, Ricardi. He's like, oh my gosh, I was at that show. Yo, man, the ending, I can't even explain that, yo, in Toronto talk. And he's like, what? <laughs> that was, man. And I I was, I was, felt blessed. I felt blessed. That, that was a time that I can't even describe and then the second time is more superficial i was <laughs> you have to I come was... you you think most people do the superficial than that but no she's going reverse yeah. all right you go natalie you go I think about it till now so last year was it last year <laughs> no it was 2018 i met i have a crush on the actor christian keys <laughs> oh. he's beautiful he has a big cross on his chest huge cross on his chest and he was here i was doing background work um so i was acting i was performing and he was on the show the boys and they were um doing the they were on set in hamilton and a friend of mine actually met him a year prior so and i didn't know christian was gonna be there my friend i see my friend talking to him and i was like oh, he's here so I text my friend CM time. I said, oh my God, oh my God. So then he's like, um, he's like, uh, yeah, come over, meet him. I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. And he's like, no, come over, don't worry. Yeah, so I got to take a picture with him. I know it may not be a performance um experience, no, okay. but that's my performance experience. <laughs> what, what was the first word? What was the first thing you said to him? Hi. <laughs> At least you got that out. <laughs> I said hi. So, I congratulated him on the on the um getting the part, getting the the part on the show because he had talked about it on Instagram. Yeah. And um, I said all right, and I asked him about his character, and that was it. That's all I could. Oh, you, you, like, you, I, didn't, you didn't ask if he was single. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I, I, maybe that's why I'm still single. Hey, maybe that's why I didn't go for it. You know, I didn't go for Christian Geese. You know? <laughs> Well, uh, as we're starting to wind down, uh, a few things. Uh, oh, my goodness. Aisha, uh, Aisha Stag Staggers is going. Canada loves its citizens because she can't stand what the U.S. is doing right now. She loved your story about the dance. Uh, Divine Rights saying that story about the dance show gave me chills in a good way. I could visualize everyone singing. Yeah, it was beautiful. Trust me. Wonderful. And uh, and Miss Danny Redwine is in the digital building on Get Vocal. Hello, Miss Danny. Hey, hey, um, hey, hey. Yeah, man. And even Luke saying, Danny's here. All right. And Danny's like superstar. I'm telling you. She goes, I missed. She says, dear, I miss it. Hey, y'all. Don't worry. That's what we do replays. Well, we're, come, we're winding it down. And uh, a few last things I'd like you to share with the audience. One thing is, what are you looking forward to for Friday evening? What What are you, other than being anxious, what are you excited about? <laughs> what am I excited about? I'm excited just to do it. I am excited, you know, to, to do the show. I'm excited to for what people will receive because I know they, they, I mean, I don't know if it's a cliche, but laughter is good medicine. You know, it really is, especially in this time 
a lot of people are fearful. They need to take their mind off of certain things. So I'm just looking to kick back and just, you know, catch some jokes and give some jokes same time and leave, have people feeling good about themselves. Uh, two last things. What would you be? What would you be doing if you did, weren't entertaining right now? Where do you think you'd be? At the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Still okay. In the bank. <laughs> and then and then finally, what would you be without God in your life? Dead. Wow. I would be dead. I would not okay. be here. Oh. Straight. Yeah. Praise to that. I'm telling well, you. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. Well. I don't think we need to do anything more after that. <laughs> I think, I think uh, we are just, that's it. Don't get good, get done. Exit stage that's left, right. be good. <laughs> Ms. Natalie, it has been a pleasure sharing, laughing, and uh, enjoying you over the last few minutes. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you or find out more about what you're doing, where, where do they go? You can go to Instagram at one, that's the number one, Natalie Camille. And also YouTube, Natalie Camille. There's a couple of them. You'll find me. <laughs> and uh, and then and you'll you will find her along with other wonderful black queens, the black queens of comedy on Friday evening starting at 8 p.m. If yeah. you want to find out more information. Oh, look at this divine right. Please send the link for the show below. I've DM'd you the link already via Twitter, uh, divine right. So it's in your Twitter timeline DM. I've sent it. I Like I said, the, the, the address is just go to Everbright, put a laugh along. It's a laugh along com weekend comedy show, but just put a laugh along. You'll get there. Again, there may be a few free tickets <laughs> left if there are. Get them. I have. I'm speaking it. I have a theme by midnight. Them gone. Yes. But we like to see them gone before we finish this. To be honest yeah. with you, it's gonna now, be a good show. Oh yeah, and and I'm blessed to be a co-host with. But she is funny. If you don't get the free tickets, you can still get a ticket. Just put us a, a small donation. You know, we'd really we'd really appreciate because you can see this. This is just one part of the massive laughter you're going to be getting that evening and we all need laughter especially mm -hmm. at this time so we want to see everyone show up yeah. in a big way so i'm gonna say i'm dr vibe host and producer of the award-winning dr vibe show 2018 award winner in the innovation category given out by the canadian ethnic media association i'm also the host and co-producer of monthly online conversations for fathers that are sponsored by dad central canada's national father organization and Dove Men Care. I'd like to thank a whole pile of people here tonight. Lady Day that's been here since the beginning. Luke, thank you. Danny, thank you for stepping in right at the end. Thank you. Uh, but she is funny, who is the, the mastermind behind the madness that's going to happen on Friday night. Mm -hmm. We also had uh, Divine Right and also Aisha K. Staggers on the Periscope platform. Uh, let me just take a look on we have people watching too on Facebook Live. I know that at least Tanya, Ta 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 Toya, sorry, Toya C was watching. <laughs> I get that correct. And some others. Uh, YouTube, we had some people on YouTube. If I didn't mention you, it's because of my head, not my heart. But wow. I'd like to say thank you for watching live or on the replay. The replay will be up on my website. Oh, Danny's saying, I have to watch this. Can't wait till Friday, Natalie. Adorable face. So, so. Thank you. Luke is saying that was fun, beautiful. <laughs> I always end off my conversations like this: live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get small to get stronger. Block assumptions and then aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Amen. God bless. Peace be well. Keep the faith and please show up on Friday night. It's gonna be massive. Where we that come from, gonna be massive madness. Yeah. In, in a good way, and and we want to see uh, sister did it on 
Friday night. Yes, so you close. Want you want to see Sister Dean? Yes. <laughs> you, you want Sister Dean to come for this show? Laugh along, laugh along. You want me laugh along? <laughs> Folks, I got to get out of here because I'm going to fall off my chair and I don't want to do that live. So God bless everybody. Walk good, stay safe, and lead with love. Bless Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>